Renaissance humanism is the study of classical antiquity, at first in Italy and then spreading across Western Europe in the 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries. The term Renaissance humanism is contemporary to that period Renaissance Renascimento, rebirth, and humanist. Whence modern humanism, also Renaissance humanism to distinguish it from later developments grouped as humanism. Renaissance humanism was a response to the utilitarian approach and what came to be depicted as the narrow pedantry associated with medieval scholasticism. Humanists sought to create a citizenry able to speak and write with eloquence and clarity and thus capable of engaging in the civic life of their communities and persuading others to virtuous and prudent actions. This was to be accomplished through the study of the Studia Humanitatis, today known as the humanities, grammar, rhetoric, history, poetry, and moral philosophy. According to one scholar of the movement, Early Italian humanism, which in many respects continued the grammatical and rhetorical traditions of the Middle Ages, not merely provided the old trivium with a new and more ambitious name Studia Humanitatis, but also increased its actual scope, content and significance in the curriculum of the schools and universities and in its own extensive literary production. The Studia Humanitatis excluded logic, but they added to the traditional grammar and rhetoric not only history, Greek, and moral philosophy, but also made poetry, once a sequel of grammar and rhetoric, the most important member of the whole group. Humanism was a pervasive cultural mode and not the program of a small elite, a program to revive the cultural legacy, literary legacy, and moral philosophy of classical antiquity. There were important centers of humanism in Florence, Naples, Rome, Venice, Genoa, Mantua, Ferrara, and Urbino. Origin Some of the first humanists were great collectors of antique manuscripts, including Petrarch, Giovanni Boccaccio, Coluccio Salutati, and Poggio Bracciolini. Of the four, Petrarch was dubbed the father of humanism", because of his devotion or loyalty to Greek and Roman scrolls. Many worked for the Catholic Church and were in holy orders, like Petrarch, while others were lawyers and chancellors of Italian cities, and thus had access to book-copying workshops, such as Petrarch's disciple Salutati, the Chancellor of Florence. In Italy, the humanist educational program won rapid acceptance and, by the mid-15th century, many of the upper classes had received humanist educations, possibly in addition to traditional scholasticist ones. Some of the highest officials of the Catholic Church were humanists with the resources to amass important libraries. Such was Cardinal Basilios Bessarion, a convert to the Catholic Church from Greek Orthodoxy, who was considered for the papacy, and was one of the most learned scholars of his time. There were several 15th century and early 16th century humanist popes, one of whom, Aeneas Silvius Piccolomini, Pope Pius II, was a prolific author and wrote a treatise on the education of boys. These subjects came to be known as the humanities, and the movement which they inspired is shown as humanism. The migration waves of Byzantine Greek scholars and emigres in the period following the Crusader sacking of Constantinople and the end of the Byzantine Empire in 1453 greatly assisted the revival of Greek and Roman literature and science via their greater familiarity with ancient languages and works. They included Gemistus Pletho, George of Trebizond, Theodorus Gaza, and John Argyropoulos. Italian humanism spread northward to France, Germany, the Low Countries, and England with the adoption of large-scale printing after the end of the era of incunabula or books printed prior to 1501, and it became associated with the Protestant Reformation. In France, preeminent humanist Guillaume Budet (1467–1540) applied the philological methods of Italian humanism to the study of antique coinage and to legal history, composing a detailed commentary on Justinian's Code. Budet was a royal absolutist and not a republican like the early Italian humanisti who was active in civic life, serving as a diplomat for François I and helping to found the Collège des Lectures Royaux later the Collège de France. Meanwhile, Marguerite de Navarre, the sister of François I, was a poet, novelist, and religious mystic who gathered around her and protected a circle of vernacular poets and writers, including Clement Merritt, Pierre de Ronsard, and François Rabelais. Paganism and Christianity in the Renaissance Topic 
Many humanists were churchmen, most notably Pope Pius II, Aeneas Silvius Piccolomini, Sixtus IV, and Leo X, and there was often patronage of humanists by senior church figures. Much humanist effort went into improving the understanding and translations of biblical and early Christian texts, both before and after the Protestant Reformation, which was greatly influenced by the work of non-Italian, northern European figures such as Desiderius Erasmus, Jacques Lefebvre de Taples, William Grosson, and Swedish Catholic Archbishop in exile Olaus Magnus. The Cambridge Dictionary of Philosophy describes the rationalism of ancient writings as having tremendous impact on Renaissance scholars. Here, one felt no weight of the supernatural pressing on the human mind, demanding homage and allegiance. Humanity—with all its distinct capabilities, talents, worries, problems, possibilities—was the center of interest. It has been said that medieval thinkers philosophized on their knees, but, bolstered by the new studies, they dared to stand up and to rise to full stature. Inevitably, the rediscovery of classical philosophy and science would eventually challenge traditional religious beliefs. In 1417, for example, Poggio Bracciolini discovered the manuscript of Lucretius, De Rerum Natura, which had been lost for centuries and which contained an explanation of Epicurean doctrine, though at the time this was not commented on much by Renaissance scholars, who confined themselves to remarks about Lucretius's grammar and syntax. Lorenzo Valla, however, puts a defense of Epicureanism in the mouth of one of the interlocutors of one of his dialogues. Valla S defense or adaptation of Epicureanism was later taken up in the Epicurean by Erasmus, the prince of humanists. If people who live agreeably are Epicureans, none are more truly Epicurean than the righteous and godly. And if it is names that bother us, no one better deserves the name of Epicurean than the revered founder and head of the Christian philosophy, Christ. For in Greek, Epicoros means helper. He alone, when the law of nature was all but blotted out by sins, when the law of Moses incited to lists rather than cured them, when Satan ruled in the world unchallenged, brought timely aid to perishing humanity. Completely mistaken, therefore, are those who talk in their foolish fashion about Christ's having been sad and gloomy in character and calling upon us to follow a dismal mode of life. On the contrary, he alone shows the most enjoyable life of all and the one most full of true pleasure. This passage exemplifies the way in which the humanists saw pagan classical works, such as the philosophy of Epicurus, as being in harmony with their interpretation of Christianity. Renaissance Neo-Platonists such as Marsilio Ficino whose translations of Plato's works into Latin were still used into the 19th century attempted to reconcile Platonism with Christianity, according to the suggestions of early church fathers Lactantius and Saint Augustine. In this spirit, Pico della Mirandola attempted to construct a syncretism of all religions he was not a humanist but an Aristotelian trained in Paris, but his work did not win favor with the church authorities. Historian Stephen Kreis expresses a widespread view derived from the 19th-century Swiss historian Jacob Burkhardt, when he writes that, the period from the 14th century to the 17th worked in favor of the general emancipation of the individual. The city-states of northern Italy had come into contact with the diverse customs of the East, and gradually permitted expression in matters of taste and dress. The writings of Dante, and particularly the doctrines of Petrarch and humanists like Machiavelli, emphasized the virtues of intellectual freedom and individual expression. In the essays of Montaigne the individualistic view of life received perhaps the most persuasive and eloquent statement in the history of literature and philosophy. Two noteworthy trends in Renaissance humanism were Renaissance Neoplatonism and Hermeticism, which through the works of figures like Nicholas of Cuse, Giordano Bruno, Cornelius Agrippa, Campanella and Pico della Mirandola sometimes came close to constituting a new religion itself. Of these two, Hermeticism has had great continuing influence in Western thought, while the former mostly dissipated as an intellectual trend, leading to movements in Western esotericism such as theosophy and New Age thinking. The Yeats' thesis of Francis Yeats holds that before falling out of favor, esoteric Renaissance thought introduced several concepts that were useful for the development of scientific method, though this remains a matter of controversy. Though humanists continued to use their scholarship in the service of the Church into the middle of the 16th century and beyond, the sharply confrontational religious atmosphere following the Protestant Reformation resulted in the Counter-Reformation that sought to silence challenges to Catholic theology, with similar efforts among the Protestant denominations. 
However, a number of humanists joined the Reformation movement and took over leadership functions, for example, Philip Melanchthon, Ulrich Zwingli, John Calvin, and William Tyndale. With the Counter-Reformation initiated by the Council of Trent 1545 positions hardened and a strict Catholic orthodoxy based on scholastic philosophy was imposed. Some humanists, even moderate Catholics such as Erasmus, risked being declared heretics for their perceived criticism of the Church. The historian of the Renaissance Sir John Hale cautions against too direct a linkage between Renaissance humanism and modern uses of the term humanism. Renaissance humanism must be kept free from any hint of either humanitarianism or humanism in its modern sense of rational, non religious approach to life. The word Humanism will mislead if it is seen in opposition to a Christianity its students in the main wish to supplement, not contradict, through their patient excavation of the sources of ancient God-inspired wisdom." <laughs> Humanists See also Topic: Thomas More, Greek scholars in the Renaissance, Humanist Latin, Legal Humanists, New Learning. Topic: Notes. Topic. Topic: Further reading. Topic. Bulgar, R. R. The Classical Heritage and Its Beneficiaries, From the Carolingian Age to the End of the Renaissance. Cambridge, 1954. Cassaray, Ernst. Individual and Cosmos in Renaissance Philosophy. Harper and Rowe, 1963. Cassaray, Ernst editor, Paul Oscar Christeller editor, John Herman Randall editor. The Renaissance Philosophy of Man. University of Chicago Press, 1969. Cassaray, Ernst. Platonic Renaissance in England. Gordian, 1970. Salenza, Christopher S. The Lost Italian Renaissance, Humanism, Historians, and Latin's Legacy. Baltimore, Johns Hopkins University Press. 2004 ISBN 978-0-8018-8384-2 Salenza, Christopher S. Petrarch, Everywhere a Wanderer. London, Rieckchen. 2017 Erasmus, Desiderius. The Epicurean. In Colloquies. Guerin, A. Eugenio. Science and Civic Life in the Italian Renaissance. New York, Doubleday, 1969. Guerin, A. Eugenio. Italian Humanism, Philosophy and Civic Life in the Renaissance. Basil Blackwell, 1965. Guerin, A. Eugenio. History of Italian Philosophy, 2 vols, Amsterdam, New York, Rodopi, 2008. ISBN 978-90-420-2321-5 Grafton, Anthony. Bring Out Your Dead, The Past is Revelation. Harvard University Press, 2004 ISBN 0-674-01597-5 Grafton, Anthony. Worlds Made by Words, Scholarship and Community in the Modern West. Harvard University Press, 2009 ISBN 0-674-03257-8 Hale, John. A Concise Encyclopedia of the Italian Renaissance. Oxford University Press, 1981, ISBN 0 500 23333 0. Kallendorf, Craig W., editor. Humanist Educational Treatises. Cambridge, Massachusetts, The I. Tati Renaissance Library, 2002. Cray, Jill. Editor. The Cambridge Companion to Renaissance Humanism. Cambridge University Press, 1996. Christeller, Paul Oscar. Renaissance Thought and Its Sources. Columbia University Press, 1979 ISBN 978-0-231-04513-1 Pico della Mirandola, Giovanni. Oration on the Dignity of Man. In Cassare, Christeller, and Randall, eds. Renaissance Philosophy of Man. University of Chicago Press, 1969. Skinner, Quentin. Renaissance Virtues, Visions of Politics, Vol. 2. Cambridge University Press, 2002 2007. McManus, Stuart M. Byzantines in the Florentine Polis, Ideology, Statecraft and Ritual during the Council of Florence. 
Journal of the Oxford University History Society, 6 Michaelmas 2008, Hillary 2009. Melchert, Norman 2002. The Great Conversation, A Historical Introduction to Philosophy. McGraw-Hill. ISBN 0-19-517510-7. Nauert, Charles Garfield. Humanism and the Culture of Renaissance Europe, New Approaches to European History. Cambridge University Press, 2006. Plum, J. H. Ed., The Italian Renaissance 1961, American Heritage, New York, ISBN 0 618 12738 0. Page refs from 1978, UK Penguin EDN. Rosalini, Roberto. The Age of the Medici, Part 1, Cosimo de' Medici, Part 2, Alberti 1973. Film series. Criterion Collection. Simmons, John Addington, The Renaissance in Italy. Seven volumes, 1875–1886. Trinkhaus, Charles Renaissance Idea of the Dignity of Man. In Wiener, Philip P. Dictionary of the History of Ideas. ISBN 0-684-13293-1. Retrieved 2 December 2009. Trinkhaus, Charles. The Scope of Renaissance Humanism. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press, 1983. Wind, Edgar. Pagan Mysteries in the Renaissance. New York, W. W. Norton, 1969. Witt, Ronald. In the Footsteps of the Ancients, The Origins of Humanism from Lovato to Bruni, Leiden, Brill Publishers, 2000 Topic External links Topic Humanism 1, an outline by Albert Rabel, Jr. Rome Reborn, The Vatican Library and Renaissance Culture, Humanism. The Library of Congress. 1 July 2002 Paganism in the Renaissance, BBC Radio 4 Discussion with Tom Healy, Charles Hope and Evelyn Welch in Our Time, June 16, 2005.